Welcome to Hola y Aloha. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii, where we work hard to be a resource for the Latino business community. We offer bi-monthly Buenos Dias breakfast networking events and bi-weekly Hola y Aloha podcast um, brought to you by Think Tech Hawaii. Hola, my name is Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. Hola, and I am Marisol. I am the vice president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in Hawaii. And we are so excited to uh, have you guys here with us today. Uh, today's episode is about bringing authentic flavors of Latin America to Hawaii. And our special guests are Alejandro Villarino and Megan Chun. And they are the new owners of Mercado de la Raza. If you've ever been there, it is the Mercado located at um, 1315 Baratania Avenue. We're so excited to talk to them uh, about what they're doing, their venture, and how they got here. So without further ado, we want to thank you so much and welcome you to the show. Welcome to the thank show, you. Alex and Megan. Um, yes, today is a, a lesson on true entrepreneurship. We have the whole family with us, Alex. Megan and Sebastian. So um, I've been following you guys on Instagram for a while, or the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii has been following you. And I saw uh, congratulations on your new wedding, the baby. And, you know, I just want to ask you um, who you are and what brought you to Hawaii. Thank you very much, Barbara. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And yeah, we're bringing authentic flavors and we're also bringing an authentic view into what this journey of entrepreneurship is, which means being at the store uh, where we have to uh, multitask and be in this uh, lovely conversation uh, while caring for a little one and uh, getting married, as you mentioned, and all of the things that, you know, I think small business owners have to deal with, a combination of uh, personal life and professional life and, and trying to keep the lights on for, for all of our customers. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about, um, tell us about your business, like what is it exactly, and what inspired you to become a small business owner? Our journey, I think, started actually many years ago when I first met Alex, and he had a dream to have a Mexican market, and, you know, life living in New York, we used to live in New York, um, never really put us on the path to that dream until we moved to Hawaii. So I'm from here and Alex is from Mexico. And upon, you know, moving here, we found Mercado de la Raza and we met Marta. And, you know, she was ready after 28 years of um, running the store, she was ready to retire. And after coming and speaking with her, it kind of came to us. And that's how we met Mercado de la Raza and took over and are here um, as its new stewards, I'll say, its new owners and stewards. That's exciting. It's so, you know, it, it's great to pass the torch and have a new generation come on and, and do things a little bit differently. And um, yeah, what have you learned in the last six months running this business? <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> Alex, would you like to answer? I mean, I think uh, one of the biggest lessons is you have to constantly change hats. Sometimes I, I think that identities are hats, and and sometimes you have to be acting as uh, someone talking to customers and and put that face of like, okay, I'm all about um, customer service. Other times you have to be thinking about, okay. How do I solve the logistics issue? We all know that in Hawaii, logistics, I think, is a big part of having a business. So ensuring that the product is arriving, ensuring that we have good relationships with vendors, all of that is what we need to take into consideration. And, and you're constantly changing hat. Like the other hat is a caretaker for a baby. And, and that's what you need to balance. Yeah, I think it's really paid to be a generalist as an entrepreneur rather than a specialist. Um, you don't have to be, you know, an expert in, it doesn't pay to be an expert in one thing necessarily in what we're doing. You kind of have to be good at many different things and be open, be flexible, and really quick on your feet. Because um, as you know, as entrepreneurs, 
things can change like that. And you've just got to be on your problem solving game all the time. Had you guys, absolutely, had you guys um, uh, owned your own business prior to um, El Mercado de la Raza, or is this like your your first crack at it? This is this is our first business wow. that we've owned. Yeah, I think we've, you know, each of us has had our little projects that we've tried to kick off um, when we were, you know, younger and much more ambitious. <laughs> But this is the first project that is ours that we own that really affects um, a, a larger community. And so, you know, it, it also brings with it a lot of responsibility. Right. And I've been in your store many times. I, I love it. And I get so excited because especially being here in Hawaii, we're so isolated from like the mainland, right, where there's so many Latinos and there's so many, you know, different uh, kinds of Latinos, right, in, in, a, in, a, in a smaller area here. It's like we have, this is the one market that we have really, right? So do you ever feel, and I get excited when I'm in there and I just, you know, I get nostalgic. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, but do you feel, because there are so many Latin American countries and you're obviously uh, all inclusive, right? How do you determine what you bring in, what you don't, what can, you know, how do you determine that? Because I feel like that's a, a pretty huge feat uh, to, to endure. Yeah, I can answer that. Uh, you know, we we do our best to bring as much as we can. Uh, I, I, I would say a, a lot of what we do is actually give the voice to customers. So we, we have a long list of suggestions because obviously, uh, sorry, of, of requests, exactly. Because, uh, uh, you know, everyone who comes into the store, there's always like, oh, do you think you can bring us this? And, you know, we, I, I think we do our best to try to accommodate and bring it. Uh, at the same time, uh, the reality of, of our business is th this is a market, right? So there needs to be a market and a, and a demand for the product. Um, we actually at some point had an idea of like, okay, well, what if we start a board? And, and we can put post-its or like suggestions and requests from people and, and others can plus one or like add, like, yes, please bring this one, please uh, bring this other one. That's a tentative idea that we have uh, in order to bring new product. Because some, sometimes people are, are asking us to bring things that uh, some cases only one person wants it and, and it's hard, right? Or, or sometimes uh, they're asking for a product that's from a, uh, not only from a specific country, but from a specific region of a country. And and we are like, yeah, we would love to bring it, but we are not sure that uh, 40 people would like to buy that product, right? Like maybe it's only one or two. Um, so we we try to accommodate as best as we can. We, is, we always encourage and ask uh, our customers to share with us what product they would like to see. And then it's this game of trying to find it, the thing if there's a market, if there is more people asking about it, then we'll definitely have it. And to be honest, sometimes it's just a, a little bit of a, a trial and error. Like so in some cases, we bring the product and sometimes it sells great and sometimes it doesn't. And then we know that there, there's no market for it anymore and, and we won't be bringing it uh, again. Right. Yeah, that's smart to do a, to do a survey, right? Last time I was in your... Um, store, uh, Megan showed me around and you showed me some products from Peru and Venezuela. So like you said, how did those products turn out? Or I think uh, the Peruvian, Peruvian, well, I should back up and say there's, there's a, a growing interest, I think, in Peruvian food, especially now. You know, the, the world's 50 best list just came out. I think it was two weeks ago and the top restaurant in the world is in Peru. And I think oh, like 20% wow. of all of, of that list of the world's top 50 is in Latin America. So there's, you know, it's, I think that's an interesting point is that, yes, we do have a lot of Latinos who come in here and people who are interested, you know, they're curious, which is another, you know, reason why we wanted to take over is because we want to have that uh, platform to share and to educate um, about culture and food, through food. I, I have a, a question for you guys. Um, what what would you like the mercado to be known for? I'll give this one to Alex. Oh, uh, well, I think we would like to be known by 
uh, bringing the community together. I think we really care about, as my experience as an immigrant in this country and in this island specifically, I longed for a place where I could feel that I, I could speak my language, where I could find the things from my home. Uh, so providing that for the community is very important. Um, I think we also have a, a commitment to service to that community. Uh, we really care about uh, providing a platform for other businesses. Um, we really care about like creating the conditions for other businesses to thrive and for other entrepreneurs to to start their own ventures, especially when it comes to to food. Um, and also, we we just want to provide also a place for people to learn about. Uh, Hispanic and, and Latino uh, products, communities, culture. Uh, uh, a lot of, uh, we, we actually have a lot of customers who don't know or are not very familiar with the countries or with the products or the foods or the culture. And, and they come here and they ask questions and, and, and they, they are interested in, in understanding, oh, what, what is that chili? Or like, how do you use that dough? Or like, how do you cook that meat? And and that's something that's close to our hearts and, and and something that we really care about. That's interesting that you said that about the meats. I saw that you guys are starting to carry some marinated um, different kinds of meats, uh, you know, because we, we don't have anything like that out here. Can you tell us about that? There are so many people who visit Hawaii or they live in Hawaii and they're looking to spend some time with family with the foods that they know. And a lot of people like to do that around, you know, an asada. They want to grill together. And so they were asking for, you know, uh, some marinated meat. And there's no carnicity on the island yet. And so what we're doing is our best to accommodate. So we have, you know, um, we always have chorizo and we're bringing in some more marinated meat, some specialty items um, that we hope will cater to to our customers and and give them that what they need to have that experience with family and a little taste of home. So I it's love it. We need a small selection. Yeah, it's a small we selection. Need a garden but city it's a start. Yeah. It is it, it's a start and you know we're we're on an island obviously and what do what do we love to do is go to the beach and grill, you know, so it's it, there's going to exactly. be a, there's definitely a demand and a niche for that. That's awesome. I'm so excited actually that you guys are here and I just um came back from the mainland. And you're absolutely right with the, the marinades and the carne asada. That's what we do. And it's, you can we do it in marinated? Yes, but it's so nice if you can go somewhere and already have it prepared. Exactly. And, and that's what we're looking for. So is that maybe something you guys are planning in the future? A uh, opening a carniceria? Because that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be certainly, it, I would say nothing is out of the plan. Uh, I think it will take us a little, a little while uh, uh, to to craft and 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 to to crack the code on on how to do that because, as we were mentioning, that's not necessarily our background. But yeah, we will definitely uh, explore that that area. And you guys were talking about um, one of the things that I love that you do is, you know, it's not just your store. You really want to be a part of the community and integrate with the community and give people a space, right, to maybe promote their products. Um, you guys have a uh, venture, right, um, an initiative. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I think it's called Marchantes Latinos. That's correct. Yeah. So Marchantes Latinos was an idea that started out of, uh, actually reading a little bit about the Latino uh, business community. And uh, I remember that when we were doing the research actually to acquire the business, we learned that a lot of what happens with Latinos is uh, we are highly entrepreneurial. So there is actually, I, I don't remember the specific numbers, but Latinos are um, some of the uh, ones with the highest rate of entrepreneurship. But then oftentimes what happens is there is no capital and, and they're usually like small businesses that are just thought through the lens of like a little business here or like usually food related. And it's just focused on an amazing product, but it doesn't get to scale to, to the next level. So uh, while we were doing that research uh, and while we were also thinking about the market itself, 
part of what we want is to expand the definition of what Latino is. Uh, traditionally, I think we tend to think of products that are made in Latin America and brought here. But what we also wanted to open was the, the, the aperture to think of like things that are made by Latino hands, even if they can be made in the island. So that's where the, the, the idea started. And so what, what we ended up coming with is uh, this initiative of My Chances Latinos. My Chances is the way um, it, it, it connects to my personal story, but my mom used to go to the equivalent of farmer's markets in Mexico. Uh, over there, they're called Mercado Sobre Ruedas. And My Chances was the name uh, people would talk to each other. Like they, the, the vendor is called a marchante and they address the customer as marchante. And, and you address them in the same way. So my mom will have her my chante for the platanos and her my chante for the avocados and like everyone would be different, right? Because it was specialized stall. And uh, so we thought of like giving it that name just because it resonated with me personally. And, and we're building this network of my chantes that hopefully uh, get to grow. And, and what we do is we invite them to the store once a month. Um, we invite them to the store. We give them some space here. And we get to talk about their products. So we give them some promotion, like some like platform promotion. Like we, we post on our social media about them. Uh, we tell a little bit the story and we give them some, some space here in the store so they can talk about their product. They can talk about their business and their story and they get to sell their product here that day. And also uh, in, in many cases, the in, in subsequent weeks or, or by demand, uh, on, on demand, like based on, on, on how much need there is for that product. So we've done it a few times. We started, I believe, in March. That was the first one. Um, maybe you want to share with us who, who was that, Megan? Yeah, our we discovered our first um, marchante, Andrea, with Aloha Alfajores. Um, she brought in her homemade alfajores, her arroz con leche, and her dulce de leche brownies. And from there, you know, we've been very lucky in connecting with um, makers in the community, um, Latinos who have, you know, that entrepreneurial spirit who are trying to make the things that they love and bring a little bit of home here to Hawaii. So from there, we had... Um, Rafe and Raiz Tortillas. We had um, a panaderia, and luckily, so many people were asking us for conchas. Everybody wants pan dulce. And we met through the community here, this amazing couple from Oaxaca who makes uh, conchas. And so we brought them back um, on Saturdays. We most recently had a Peruvian corner. Um, so, you know, we're really trying to pull in um, Marchantes, not only from one country, but really from all over uh, Latin America, from Brazil, um, from we're, we're looking for people from Brazil, from Argentina, from Venezuela, from Colombia, from all over um, to be a part of it. That's such a great idea. And, and not only food, but just products, you know, handmade products by artisans. And, you know, it's going to I could see it growing. Just, you know, yeah. your vision. I could see your vision. I love it. How, how can other businesses um, participate in the Merchantes Latinos? That's a great question. Um, the way to, the way we've been working so far is uh, they just need to get and uh, get get here and, and talk to us. Uh, um, we will uh, usually ask for a sample of the product because obviously we want to uh, advertise and provide a platform for products and people that we know their story. So we have a little conversation with people to hear about their story. Uh, we tried our product and then uh, we we set the schedule because because we have a few already lined up and and then um, we we set it up. So if anyone who's listening to this is interested, they have a product idea. It's already tested and they already they they are started they are starting their journey of entrepreneurship. Uh, just come by and, and introduce yourself, talk to us. And as I said, all we want is help. So uh, we will be happy to help uh, welcome you or provide a space in the store or, or give you ideas on, on how, to, how to scale your product and how to bring it to market. And how often do you um, host the pop-ups? The pop-ups are every month, once a month. 
Uh, they're not on a set schedule right now. We kind of worked with each, with each March on day to understand what works best for them and also for us. Um, because as you know, um, we are always launching something new. Um, so besides the March on Latinos, we have some new products and interesting things happening in store. But definitely come in in person if you can bring a sample. Um, you know, we appreciate that. And tell us your story. You know, we want to understand who you are. What, why is it much like, you know, you're asking us, why are we doing this? We want to know, why are you doing this? What, what brought you here to, to embark on this journey? Because you're literally in the middle of nowhere. And that takes something special. It does. It does. And we've discussed this on, on previous podcasts, but, you know, we have 11% uh, of the population Latinos, 160,000. As of last year, this wow. year, we're predicted to be over 180,000. So growing. And um, like you said, we are entrepreneurs. So we have over 7,500 Latino business owners that employ, you know, a, a, a staff and we contribute 500 million to $1 billion to this economy in Hawaii. So we, we definitely have a, a, a great niche that, you know, it's only going to continue to grow. It's so exciting. Yeah. Well, if somebody wants to participate, what does the schedule look like? If they're going to come yeah. into the store and do the pop? We do it once a weekend. Uh, sorry, once a month. Uh, we have, uh, we're having an, a special event uh, in July of Gilagueta, uh, and that is like a specific festival in in Oaxaca in Mexico uh, so that's gonna be I believe two weeks from today um, and then we'll have someone already lined up for July I think we'll be looking for uh, someone who will be interested in in August um, and as we mentioned August and September yeah before we head into the the really busy season the busy season right yes we have a lot going on this year too with the Hispanic Chamber um, the new owners of Mercado de la Raza are creating a space for other Latino businesses and to share their stories and products with the community in Oahu. So reach out to them, follow them on Instagram. They're very active on Instagram. Um, and did you want to leave us with any um, any ending comments? Thank you for the opportunity, Barbara. I think uh, the work that you guys are doing is incredible. And, and we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about us, to talk about our family, our business. Uh, um, I think it's an amazing platform and I love the way we're all coming together to support this growing community, as you mentioned it. Um, I, I think we need more spaces to to talk about these business ideas, to share with each other what's happening and uh, to give each other's feedback on like how to do it, how to improve it, uh, how to contribute to, to the economy and to the success of all of our businesses together. Exactly. You know, we're planning a, a mastermind for next year. So, you know, like minds, how we can get together and continue to grow our community. So a lot of exciting things happening at the end of this year and beginning of next year. Um, it is including, exciting. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it is exciting because I love to meet entrepreneurs uh, in our Latino community that have the same mentality that we, we want to connect each other. We want to grow one another. We want to support one another. So it's really exciting that you're not just a regular mercado where I can go and get my, you know, frijoles and <laughs> whatever, my tortillas. Uh, you're uh -huh. promoting other businesses. And that is how we will yeah. succeed and continue to grow here. So we love it. We love having you. And as you grow, you're always welcome back. Any new ventures, anything you want to just share, uh, this is a space for you. Uh, so we're really happy you're you're here with us great point Mariso. um and before we wrap up i just want to announce some of our upcoming events uh we have a buenos dias breakfast networking coming this tuesday august 8th at taqueria El ranchero that's at 8 30 to 10 a.m and we're going to have feature guests ricky niguez and joni lum co-founders of the hawaiian islands professional panel of experts so they'll be presenting wealth builders education program and our, on our next show of Hola y Aloha on July 19th, we will be, be bringing in RIP Fitness. So they're the Latino owners of the gym and Waipahu, and they're doing a lot of great things with the community as well. They do yeah. these sipping shops and, you know, have vendors there such as the Afadores. So it's, I love what we're doing in our community. So um, thank you guys for being with us today. Um, this is Hola y Aloha on ThinkTech. We've been talking with Alex Vierino and Megan Chun. 
the new owners of Mercado de la Raza, speaking about Merchante Latinos. Thank you both for joining us today. And, and the baby. And the baby, <laughs> Sebastian. He's such a cutie. Let's see him before we leave. <laughs> oh, he's on so he, much. He's asleep now, huh? Oh, there he is. Oh, my gosh. He's having a little snack. Little snack. <laughs> And thank you, Marisol, for joining us. Thank you to our viewers. And we'll be back in two weeks. You're welcome. Please tune in. Tell all your friends. I'm Barbara DeLuca. Um, hola. No, not hola. Adios y aloha. <laughs> Adios y aloha. <laughs> thank Gracias. you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.